quick question about food. Um, I, Kristen and I have talked about this, and she shared a story with me about about you and about your relationship with food. And I've had a lot of different relationships with food through my life, and a lot of control around food. And I still notice it creep in in certain ways. Um, and this kind of fear and anxiety to eat certain foods, in particular sugar, um, you know, I was told I have hormonal insulin, you know, I just gotta be careful, and you know, just those kind of things that you're taught and told about your body, and then they feel very true, you know, whenever I eat sugar, I'm like, whoa, you know, I feel this kind of biochemical thing happening, and this sort of disconnect, because of course sometimes I notice that I'm not affected in the same way. And it's similar sort of with, right now it's like a gluten-free thing, like my mom's like, you have a gluten intolerant gene, you know, it's just these stories. And I just wondered if you had anything to offer around, because ultimately I just want to be free. We talk so much about, I just want to be able to eat whatever's in front of me, mm -hmm. or whatever is, is there, and not feel this anxiety that it's harming me, mm -hmm. and that I'm, you know, not being responsible by, you know, just eating that, you know, breaking bread or whatever it is. And I just wondered if there was a process with which you embraced all foods. <laughs> um, yeah, well, I used the Course in Miracles as my, my pathway to mind training and there was an idea in the workbook, I can be hurt by nothing but my thoughts. Uh, anything that starts to lift it up to show us the power of the mind and the power that we give to thoughts is, is important. It's very empowering. I found that very, very empowering. And, and there's a lot of specific lessons like 50 and 76. Uh, I am sustained by the love of God is 50. 76 was I am under no laws but God's. That was a good one because he gets so specific. I love it when Jesus is specific, not yeah. love your neighbor and love the Lord that God. Can you come? Give me something <laughs> a little more concrete than that, you know, that's been around a long time. So it's like, uh, and he talks about those things, but he throws in laws of nutrition um, in there, in, in a string of meaningless things um, that, that do not sustain at all. And yet it's heavily overlaid with heavy duty programming and conditioning. And um, so I found it was more just as I would practice lessons and transfer, 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 more and more and more, give over, you know, the control and the, the I know mind to say, show me, show me, show me, that I would have a lot of experiences and a lot of them involved, you know, the body, food, transportation, money, sex, you know, it just goes across the board, but the transfer, transfer of the training was so important. and. And then, um, you know, even the idea of, of, of seeing things, food is more as like a prop or a backdrop. Like, you know, we have coats or houses or whatever that is just like a prop. So, uh, it was a discipline of, of trusting. Like when I first started traveling back in 1991, I was, I was told by Jesus, eat whatever is served. And I could see the value of loosening from preferences and from a lot of conditioning of what's good foods, what's bad food, and it was offered with such love. Yeah. And, and Jesus was basically saying, don't put food in between you and your brother and you and your sister. Yeah. You know, that, I needed that context. I couldn't just see it yeah. just in terms of the food. I needed a bigger context, a big purpose. So I would go around and stay with people like just being here and being hosted with Kristen, a lot of living rooms and kitchens and dining rooms and so forth, and then, and then going to other countries and things with, served with such love with little barnacles and eyeballs on them and you know, <laughs> things like that, you know, it's just <laughs> crunchy, uh, you, know, <laughs> you know, it was, it was way beyond trying to, you know, I've gone through the very same yeah, things, go to, go to this grocery store, read, learn to help read the ingredients and and go through all that, and cholesterol level, and all the different things. It was a big unlearning of a lot of stuff for me, to just take the lesson of the day, and just, like a torch. Okay, here we go, Jesus, what, whoa, where are we going today? Because there's so much that we go through in a day. 
But if you have the torch out in front, it starts to, to spread to, you know, lots and lots of things. And, and then it, it comes to the point where it just, it's just like intuitive eating, that's the next mm -hmm. step. Of course, the, the guidance is so important. I mean, things like eating seem to be a really big deal. Medications seem to be a big deal, like don't take the wrong ones or too much, or mm -hmm. overdose, or this and this. Even things like partners, relationships, let's go beyond that. Marriages. The idea of, you know, in India they have arranged marriages, you know. Uh, one time I was on the plane and I heard, overheard two women talking. There was an Indian woman and a woman from the United States. And the Indian woman was describing her arranged marriage from when she was a teenager. And she was probably, you know, 40 or 50 years old. In glowing terms, how much she'd learned, telling the American woman, in my tradition, we believe in destiny, we believe nothing happens by accident, and so when I got my surprise husband, I was like, wow, I'm going to really use this to the max uh, <laughs> to, to end all my karma. And she had enlightenment, <laughs> and the American woman was horrified, <laughs> turning white. What do you mean? Your, your parents picked? Your marriage partner, like, oh my, she was just convulsing. She was just so upset at the idea that there was so much lack of control. She saw it just as luck and happenstance, and the woman said, oh, no, 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 this is not it at all. I feel very grateful for this partner. I, we've been together many years. I've learned so much, and the American was like, ah! <laughs> just a clash of thoughts, but it's like an undoing of this idea. I mean, in our communities, it's not like sun and moon or anything with mass marriages or anything, but occasionally we have guided marriages. And it's, people can feel it. People are telepathic, they can, they'll, they'll say, oh, 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 he's the one, she's the one, oh, that's good, it's coming soon. Usually the part of it, ah! <laughs> they don't really know it all the time, but eventually they, they see, and, and then you have these things called guided marriages, which the key word is guided, because marriage is just a symbol in this world, you know, it's just another symbol, it's used by the spirit. And then we've had guided divorces, so it takes the stigma out, guided, that means guided of the spirit, would the spirit ever guide anybody to get divorced? Yes. Let your yay be yay, let your nay be nay, it actually applies to whether you're going to eat this thing or not, or marry this person, or divorce them, you know. You start to realize how important guidance is, that it's everything. You're in two, you already know all the answers, and you, your pathway is set, and you really have to just tune in to that voluntary flow of being on your pathway, and happy to just, you know, receive what's given. And so, that, that just is nice to hear about, because it gives us a broader context, because it can be blown away out of proportion. Like the thought of, you know, if you eat so many grams of something, you'll get fat, and what does that mean? Yeah. Well, I'll be unlovable, and you know, what does that mean? Well, I'll be all lonely the rest of my life. You know, it's, there's a lot of meaning that gets tucked into that Twinkie. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, oh, yeah. it's, it's like, you look at that Twinkie, and you go, oh, oh. Little nice creamy inside. <laughs> But it's more, it's a lot of things underneath the Twinkie that's in the mind. <laughs> you could have titled this, What's Underneath the Twinkie? Good morning, sun being, you awoke. Just to see that there's a light deep within you that's shining for all of the world.